Hi ghouls and goblins. This talk is about all the animals in your tank. The kind that can make you sick. So, in your tank, you might have zoanthids. And I think everyone is familiar with zoanthids or polythoa. And all of those things actually contain polytoxin. It's more common in polythoa than in zoanthids. But there's no way for you to tell which is which in your tank. There's no visual distinction between those two genuses. So polytoxin targets the sodium potassium pump that is present in every cell in your body. And it binds to that pump and locks it open, which destroys the cell's ability to regulate those ions in and out of its uh, cellular membrane, thereby killing the cell. And because it can kill just about any cell in your body, that's why the symptoms that people report uh, from polytoxin exposure are so different because it depends on what part of your body is being killed by the toxin. So when you are cleaning your tank or scrubbing around zoanthids or trying to kill zoanthids that are taking over your tank, maybe pouring boiling water on them, something like that, they are going to release mucus. I'm sure any of you who have reef tanks, which probably most of you, uh, know that when you mess with coral, they get all mucusy and slimy. That is the slime that contains the polytoxin that is being released by the zoanthids. So if you're scrubbing them away, you are getting some mist into the air, and that mist contains some level of polytoxin. It might not be enough to make you sick, but it might be. There's no way for you to tell. Conversely, if you're trying to kill them and you're pouring boiling water over them, all that steam that's coming off could have polytoxin in, and then you're breathing that in in the same way. If you get it in your eyes, like you're scrubbing with a brush and you get some of that gunk in your eye, it can cause permanent blindness. If you were to breathe it in via a mist or steam, something like that, uh, it's going to kill cells in your lungs and you will have breathing trouble. You'll have wheezing, stuff like that. It'll be an ER visit and then an intensive care stay for a few days at least with um, an oxygen mask over your face so that you can actually breathe enough so that you don't die. Um, there is no treatment for polytoxin poisoning. The treatment is merely to keep you alive long enough for your body to repair the damage that is caused by that polytoxin exposure. A lot of people also report numbness and tingling in their hands when they're cleaning a tank that contains lots of zoanthids. This is because polytoxin can be absorbed through your skin. And when it does, you might notice a metallic taste in your mouth, tingling, numbness in your hands. It's generally not too bad if you only get it on your skin. Um, but again, if you notice those symptoms, pay attention to them. And if they get worse, maybe a trip to the emergency room might be the best option for you. There are no recorded cases that I could find of someone dying from polytoxin exposure in the home uh, aquarium sort of environment. This is because polytoxin is most dangerous if you ingest it. And I don't know about you, but zoanthids don't look tasty to me. I'm not going to fry them up and eat them for dinner. So you're not going to be eating polytoxin at home. Uh, and then the other option is um, breathing it in or getting it into your blood, uh, which again, it's, you know, you're not going to be injecting zoanthids into your bloodstream. So not going to happen at home, most likely, unless you have some kind of a, a big sort of cut while you're cleaning your tank. So if you do have a cut while you're cleaning your tank, there's a whole host of other fun things that you can worry about. Things like staph infections are really common from home aquariums. Even from swimming at the beach, you can get a staph infection if you have an open wound. Um, but more fun than staph, you have things like Mycobacterium marinum, which Again, probably isn't going to kill you, but it can cause months of discomfort, surgery, and hardcore antibiotics to get rid of it because it's not going to be cured by something like amoxicillin that you take for a couple of days. So Mycobacterium marinum takes a while to grow. It doesn't grow very fast. So if you have an open wound and you're in the tank, or maybe, maybe you get scratched while you're cleaning your tank, and that wound is just not healing, it's kind of like scabs up, gets you know, mucousy and disgusting and just not healing for a while, you might actually have a staph infection or a Mycobacterium marinum infection. Now, these are very uncommon in normal day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, exposures. So if you have something like this, it's important to tell your doctor that you do have a tank at home and that you were 
cleaning it or involved in it, exposing this wound to your tank water, because it's not going to be something that, that doctors usually think of. Mycobacterium rinum is in the same family of diseases as the one that causes tuberculosis. And just like tuberculosis, as I mentioned, it's going to be months and months of really strong antibacterial uh, drugs to get rid of it. And we're talking almost a year, maybe longer than a year of antibiotics. Um, if you wait too long, you could have amputations, things like that, because once it really gets going, you know, it is not easy to cure. And once your skin is infected, they have to get rid of that infected skin. So maybe minor surgeries up to amputations to get rid of those infections. You can also get other infections very rarely, but you can get things like Vibro, which can kill you in a couple days. So have fun with that one as well. Um, though I, I couldn't find any record of anyone actually getting that from their home aquarium. So there are another couple things that you might get in your home aquarium, but I think if you had things like a blue ringed octopus or a cone snail, you'd probably know because you put them there. And in theory, you would have put them there knowing the risk that you were taking. So we'll not go into things that can kill you in a matter of minutes, like a cone snail or a blue ring octopus. Uh, there are certainly labs that keep these things, but I don't know that anyone in a home aquarium would have one um, just on their own. There are other things in your tank that cause trouble and irritation, but won't put you in the hospital. Things like bristle worms. I have seen some bristle worms that are, I kid you not, just as big around as a number two pencil that you would have used in school. And um, when those things grow, they have, as their name would suggest, bristles all over them. And those can break off into your skin and cause real bad irritation. Um, it feels a little bit like burning. Uh, vinegar can help dissolve those, but um, once you have them in your skin, you'll kind of know it. And it's just gonna be an irritation for the next few days that you'll have to deal with. You might also have venomous fish in your tank. I think everyone knows that things like lionfish are venomous, things like rabbit fish. They also have venomous spines. Um, some people do keep scorpions and wasp fish in their tanks. Those, uh, again, you know, if you're getting something like that, you, you, you know that they're poisonous or venomous to begin with. Um, and so you're not going to worry too much uh, about running into those without knowing it because there are special care requirements around those. Um, but some things that I did find that are interesting, even things like tangs, a lot of people believe that the spines at the base of the tang's tail, um, those things that they get their name surgeon fish for, um, actually have poison glands associated with them. And so things like the scopus tang, I found a lot of reports of people getting cut by their scopus tang and then having much more of a reaction than you'd expect from just a cut. Um, but these are anecdotal. I don't know that for sure they are something that you need to worry about too much. Um, and then, of course, tangs aren't overly aggressive. If you're not messing with them too much, you're probably not going to get stung by them or get cut by them. So I hope this was interesting. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've ever encountered uh, maybe numbness after cleaning your tank and you have a bunch of zoanthids, or if you've ever actually had something like Mycobacterium marinum. Hopefully not, but uh, maybe there's a couple of you out there. It would be interesting to know uh, what your experience with the critters in your tank has been. And uh, remember, always use gloves, um, especially if you have bristle worms in your tank because they love to hide under rocks. And the places where your fingers go is most likely to be where those bristle worms are. And just a simple latex or a nitrile glove will do wonders to prevent stings from those kinds of things. Um, and then it'll also do great to wash your hands after they come out of the tank because who knows what is in that water. Um, especially once you've started to put things like live rock from the ocean in. Uh, you're bringing all sorts of interesting bacteria from who knows where and putting it and growing it in your home aquarium. So yeah, let me know what you thought. I will see you next time. Bye.